Hi there, welcome back to Super Sunday Match Day. As you can see, our chief reporter, Carve Solko, has joined us on the sofa to discuss Iran's upcoming involvement in the World Cup. Now, there are just 21 days to go until Qatar 2022, uh, with Iran facing England in their opening group game. Now, ahead of that, Carve sat down with the Iranian actor and comedian, Omid Jalili, to discuss the significance of the game, the political turmoil and protests in the country following the death of the 22-year-old Masha Amini. What's happening in Iran right now is a conscious, organic revolution started by women, pursued by women, and will most probably be concluded by women because they've had enough of enforced hijab, which I think is a, is a human right. Wearing a hijab or not wearing a hijab is up to you. We don't get men to tell you to take it off. So in Iran, uh, there was a young girl called Masha, Masha Amini who was taken in by the morality police um, who felt that she had to have like a kind of awareness course on how to wear the hijab because some of her hair was showing she resisted arrest and she was beaten and she was killed in captivity and I think this was the powder keg moment that started off a movement and then more girls were protesting and unfortunately many people got killed. Um, it's, it's become a genocide now. There are certain parts of Iran, Baluchistan, Kurdistan, that, where people they're, they're targeting young people to try and put them off from protesting. So social media is being used as a weapon now because in Iran, the internet's cut off. So they've asked people outside of the country to be their voices. And we're trying to amplify their voices as much as we can. People in Iran are so upset that violence is being used in the name of religion to suppress people. That's something that is so offensive because we're not saying we're a secular country. We're a country that respects religion, but we respect true religion. And I think they really believe that what we're seeing in Iran is a distortion of a, of a, of a perception of a certain view of religion, which uh, I think the, the, the general populace find really, really offensive. Big game coming up. Yeah. Iran uh, against England. The two countries have never played against each other. Yeah. Obviously, you're never going to get a friendly between um, England uh, and Iran at the moment. How big a deal is this game for Iranians? It's absolutely huge. Uh, Iranians love the English Premier League. They, they will know every single one of the players. It'll be a huge, um, I suppose, honour for those Iranian players to be playing against their heroes. I mean, you, you, you will see at the end of that game, every single one of those players will want the shirts of the players they're playing against. There's talk in Iran of, even though we love football, we love our team, the Team Melli, as we call the national team, there's talk of them boycotting the Iranian team. If they go, if they make it to the World Cup, if they haven't been disbanded or if, they haven't, if the team haven't come out already against the regime, which will stop them from going. There's talk of Iranian people reluctantly saying there are so many young kids who could have just jumped on the plane to go to Qatar. A lot of those people are dead now. So out of respect to them, we can't go. And in fact, we should be boycotting this game reluctantly because they love football. There will be fans there, definitely. But the majority of people in Iran, I, I think, may boycott the game. Fascinating interview there, Carve, and it's really good to hear to help us understand what's going on in the country at the moment. Um, you spoke about it, you touched about it, the fact that these two have never met before England and Iran, and there wouldn't be a friendly between the two. Just explain the situation between our two countries. Well, look, uh, the men who run Iran and rule Iran, because they're all men, uh, and they've been ruling Iran for 43 years, since 1979, they see the West as their enemies. Uh, they see the United States as the great Satan, their big enemies. They see uh, Britain as the enemy as well. So during the past 43 years, there was no way uh, England and Iran were going to play in a friendly. Mm -hmm. The only way it was going to happen uh, is at a World Cup, at the luck of the draw. That was the only way it was going to happen. And that's what's happened this time round because Iran are in a group with England and also the United States and Wales. And you, you have to bear in mind, although the people who run Iran may see England as the enemy, uh, all the Iranians I know do not feel that way. Mm. Uh, by and large, Iranians don't have any sort of problem uh, with the English or the Americans or the West. In actual fact, they love uh, English culture, Western culture, music, literature, sport, uh, you know, the Premier League, as Omid was just saying is more popular in Iran than the Iranian League. Mm. You know, every single man in Iran supports an English football team. Uh, under normal circumstances, 
it would be a massive deal that they're playing England for the first time uh, in the World Cup in three weeks' time. But of course, these are not normal circumstances. What's happening in that country at the moment is huge, isn't it? There's demonstrations all the time, you know, women visibly cutting their hair. As a mum of two girls, I've been explaining the situation there. It's very harrowing to see what's happening there at the moment. I don't, in some respects, I watch it and I think that's liberating for these women. But I equally, in equal measure, feel very terrified for what might happen to them. Well, terrible things uh, are happening in Iran at the moment. Um, mm. You know, there's a revolution going on. Uh, the revolution is not being televised because there's no free media in Iran. Uh, there's no foreign reporters. Uh, the internet is blocked. Uh, mobile data on people's phones is blocked, so it's very hard to get information out. Uh, but the people have basically had enough. Uh, you know, for 43 years, they've lived under a religious fascist dictatorship and all they want is what we take for granted mm. so they want the freedom to be able to say and think what they want if they want to be religious they want to be religious if they don't want to be religious uh, they should be free not to yeah. be religious and they should also have the freedom to uh, elect their own leaders and you touched on there that this uh, movement is being led by women uh, I mean, women in Iran for the past 43 years have been treated like second-class citizens. If you're a woman, you can't go to a football game. Uh, you can't cycle in public. You can't sing or dance in public. Your hair has to be covered. You have to wear loose clothing to cover your arms uh, and legs. Uh, if you're divorced, the children automatically go to the man. Your testimony in court is worth half of that of a man. You can't travel without the permission uh, of a man. Uh, so all these things I think people need to be aware of mm. about what's going on in Iran, especially in the build-up to this game against England. Carve, there's lots of noise now about whether Iran should actually be banned from the World Cup. Can you see that, number one, happening? And do you think they should be banned? A very good question. I think uh, you can make a very, very, very strong case that Iran should be banned from the World Cup, that FIFA uh, should suspend the Iranian Federation uh, on quite a few counts. If you look at FIFA's statutes, FIFA's own laws, uh, Article 3 says uh, FIFA is committed to respecting human rights. Look at what's happening in Iran at the moment. Uh, Article 4 says that FIFA will not allow any federation uh, to discriminate against anybody on grounds of gender ethnicity, uh, race, uh, religion. And we're talking about Iran, a country where women are not allowed into football stadiums. Now, you tell me this, would England be happy to play against the country uh, if that country did not let black people into football stadiums? Would England be happy to play against the country if that country did not allow homosexuals into football stadiums? Iran effectively does not allow women into football stadiums. So what are these England players going to be thinking when they play against Iran in three weeks' time? And I'm not blaming that on the Iranian players. The players themselves, of course, want to play in front of women. Uh, the players themselves don't want to be part of a regime or be associated with a regime that treats its own people in this way. But FIFA is not saying very much at all. Uh, FIFA is being very, very quiet on this issue. So there's Article 3 uh, about respecting human rights. Article 4 about not allowing federations to discriminate on grounds of gender. There's also Article 19 that says football federations, football associations cannot be controlled by the government. They have to be independent. Now, everybody knows that the Iranian Football Federation is run by the Iranian government. Also, we've got the side issue as well, a very, very big side issue, where Iran have been accused of supplying drones to Russia, and these drones are being used to bomb Ukraine. Uh, the Ukrainian Football Association, considering appealing to FIFA as well, uh, to ban uh, the Iranian Football Federation on those grounds as well. I must just ask you, I mean, you, you asked that question about would England be prepared to play against other nations. Does this then put the focus more on the English FA? Because, you know, at the moment we're going to Qatar and we, we, they're going to wear an armband. You know, it's hardly going to change the world. Does it 
put pressure on, on this FA to do more, to highlight this situation, to highlight the situation regarding migrant workers? I mean, you asked the question, so I suppose I've got to throw the question back at you, because England are playing these nations. They are seeing these human rights abuses. They are seeing these issues that are recurring in other countries where black people aren't being treated well, and they're still playing the games. So isn't there more of a focus on our national FA? Uh, I think uh, there's a limit to what the Football Association can do. I think they would be in a difficult position if they came out uh, and started um, speaking in public, criticising uh, Iran and the Iranian Football Federation uh, just three weeks before a game at the World Cup. I think privately, of course, they share the concerns that we all uh, share. But I think this is really an issue for FIFA. It's not an issue so much for uh, the English Football Association. The English Football Association qualified for the World Cup. They're playing in the World Cup <coughs> and they were drawn to play against Iran. Of course, in an ideal world, I don't think they would want to play against a country where women are banned uh, from entering football stadiums effectively. They wouldn't want to play against a country where the security forces are uh, killing schoolgirls. Uh, locking up journalists, locking up musicians, artists, athletes, sportsmen, sportswomen. In an ideal world, I don't think England would want to play against that kind of country, but I don't think it's really up to the FA uh, to be making these points and to be making a stand. I think it is up to FIFA. Okay, brilliant stuff. Thank you so much, Carver, for all that.